ان الحمد لله وحده الصلاه والسلام على من لا نبي بعده وبعد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي سبحانك لا علم لنا الا ما علمتنا انك انت العليم الحكيم so now we discuss how how can we get connected to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through through dhul jalali wal ikram as we know that the prophet muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam uh, he used to recite the dua after every salah now here we can realize the significance of dhul jalali wal ikram there are many attributes of allah all are important in their respective positions but as far as dhul jalali wal ikram are concerned and assalam is concerned assalam and dhul jalali wal ikram after every salah prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam used to recite this dua allahumma anta assalam wa minka assalam tabarakta ya dhul jalali wal ikram uh, i have seen that many people they have added a few expressions to this dua اللهم انت السلام ومنك السلام واليك يعود السلام حينا ربنا بالسلام وادخلنا دار السلام تبارك يا ذا الجلال والاكرام ا uh, the expressions the meanings of the expressions are good but it is against the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam whatever prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam prescribed to recite therein lies our success so we need not to add anything or delete anything our success lies in fulfilling in, in fulfilling what prophet has commanded us sallallahu alaihi wasallam our complete adherence to his his commands therein lies our success so we need to avoid such expressions which does not correspond to what prophet said sallallahu taala alaihi wasallam in the hadith so whatever is against the hadith we need to avoid it so in hadith what is mentioned allahumma anta salam wa minka salam tabarakta ya dhal jalal wal ikram So from there we can understand we can realize the significance of this attribute that after every salah prophet sallallahu taala alaihi wasallam he he supplicated to allah with this dua allahumma anta salam wa minka salam tabarakta ya dhal jalal wal ikram actually ru when it is preceded by ya it is changed into dha it was dhul jalal wal ikram but because of the ya which is known as harf an nida and the 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 address after this is known as munada so it is because of ya ru is changed into dha so we say ya dhal jalali wal ikram it is wrong to say ya dhul jalali wal ikram it is wrong to say grammatically it is totally wrong so we need to just take care of this thing whenever we recite this we should say ya dhal jalali wal ikram however when we pronounce it when we recite it without ya so it returns back to this position that is zul jalal wal ikram so prophetic dua sallallahu alaihi wasallam was allahumma anta salam wa minka salam allahumma anta salam wa minka salam tabarakta ya dhal jalal wal ikram so after every salah and which is actually an expression after the salah we say to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allahum anta salam o oh Allah you are salam you are free of all deficiencies and flaws means that whatever i ask it is not impossible for you so my thinking of impossibility is a flaw on me and you are free of all flaws it means that whatever i ask you it's not difficult for you because you are free of all flaws all deficiencies Allahum anta salam wa minka salam you are salam and all salam comes through you you are the source of the peace tabarak blessed are you dhul jalali wal ikram the possessor of honor and dignity the possessor of majesty and honor and dhul jalali wal ikram one of the scholar says al munfarid bi sifat al jalali wal kamal wal azamah the one who who exclusively possess 
the attributes of majesty, attributes of perfection, and the at attributes of grandeur and magnanimity. It's only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-Mukhtas bil ikrami wal karama. The one who exclusively possess, exclusively possess the generosity and the munificence. Falahu kullu jalal. All majesty belong to him. Wa minhu kullu karama. All respect emanate from him. Lahu jalal fi dhatihi. His majesty is of his own. There are many people who, who claim to be majestic. Fir'aun said, Ana rabbukum al-a'la. I'm your Lord, the exalted, the, the highest. As I said before, one of the meaning of Jalal is to be high, to be lofty. So he claimed to be the, to be the to, lofty Lord. But he was, he, was, he was brought down to the ground by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the, those who claim to have Jalal, high position, they don't have of their own. But, Lahul jalalu fi dhatihi. His jalal is in his essence, in his attributes, in his actions. Wal ikram faidu minhu ala khalqihi. And generosity emanates from him for his creatures, for his servants. Wa ikramuhu lahum bil ataya wal minah wal ala. La yuhsa wa la yu'at. He respects his servants. He has given enough respect to them as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَيْنِ آدَمْ Indeed we have honored and dignified the human being the son of Adam it means all the people are dignified we know that the human flesh is haram forbidden the pork is also forbidden does it mean that the pork and the human flesh is, is the same? no there is a huge difference between the two the pork, it is prohibited out of disgrace, out of disrespect, out of disliking. And the human flesh is haram. It is prohibited out of honor and dignity, out of respect, out of reverence. So, ikramuhu lahum bil ataya. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala respects His servants bil ataya. By providing them a lot of gifts. Wal minah, a lot of blessings. Wal ala, a lot of bounties. La yuhsa wa la yu'ad Which cannot be counted, which cannot be enamored. Countless and endless blessings and bounties he showers upon his upon his servants. That is his ikram. That is all jalal wal ikram. Fahuwal jadeer bil ikram min khalqihi. So he deserved to be respected by his servants. Ta'zeeman li jalalihi Out of respect for his high position. وَإِرْفَانًا بِفَضْلِهِ وَإِكْرَامِهِ After a person recognizes his position, then out of the grace, out of the respect for him, وَتَخْدِيرًا لِنِعَمِهِ وَإِحْسَانِهِ It is speculating about the ni'mah, the blessings and the, 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 the bounties he showered upon us. So this is the first thing that after every salah, we recite ذُلْ جَلَيَا ذَلْ جَلَالِ وَالْإِكْرَامِ This is the significance. And there's also a hadith that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked. Uh, it, it is mentioned that in the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam كان مارا في طريق He was walking on the road كان مارا في طريق إذ سمع عربيا يقول He was walking on the road and he heard a Bedouin saying اللهم إني أسألك باسمك الأعظم العظيم O oh Allah, I ask you through your most loftiest of names, most greatest of the names, Al-Hannan, Al-Mannan, the most compassionate, the one who is most generous and who showers his mercy upon us, his gift is upon us. Malik Al-Mulk, the possessor of all dominion, Tul Jalali Wal Ikram, the possessor of all majesty and the, and the honor. So he recited this dua. Prophet heard him while he was walking on the road. He heard this Bedouin supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with this dua. Allahumma inni as'aluka bismika al-a'zam al-azim al-hannan al-mannan malika al-mulk dhul jalali wal-ikra. Faqala nabiyu sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallama 
Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala sallam said, إِنَّهُ دَعَى بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الَّذِي إِذَا دُعْيَ بِهِ أَجَابَ وَإِذَا سُئِلَ بِهِ أُعْطِيَ وَإِذَا سُئِلَ بِهِ أَعْطَى Indeed, he supplicated to Allah with the name when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala supplicated with this dua, he answers the dua. Whether su'ila bihi, when someone asks him of this dua, through this dua, a'ta, he provides him whatever he asks for. So it means that this dua ensures that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts the dua of a person. He answers the supplication of his servant when this dua is mentioned and in this dua, few of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are mentioned. Allahumma inni as'aluka bismikal a'zam al-azim al-hannan al-mannan malik al-mulk dhul jalali wa al-karam So whenever, whatever we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will provide to us. Whatever we we want from Allah, Allah will give us. So this attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it encompasses the intensive form of grandeur, honor, compassion, mercy and generosity. When all these things are put together, Al-Jaleel, just one specific thing is mentioned there. In its fullest and in its complete form. Al-Kareem, yes, all the meaning of Karama is there. When this Al-Jalal, Al-Jaleel, Al-Kareem, Al-Rahim, Al-Wadud is put together, it gives rise to Zul Jalali wal Ikram. Zul Jalali wal Ikram. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has all the power. He possesses all the dominion. That's what we call as Zul Jalali wal Ikram. So this is the first way that we get connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So following the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after every salah, when we turn our salam, when we turn the last and left and last salam, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, then Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. One narration, another narration says Allahu Akbar also. So whichever is, whichever is possible for a person, we can recite both the ways. And then a person should say, Allahumma anta salam, wa minka salam, tabarakta, ya dal jalali wal ikram. However, we need to be focused. Most of the time what we do, we are thinking about many things. Allahumma anta salam, minka salam, tabarakta, ya dal jalali. Just looking here and there. No, we need to be sharply focused. Then and only then we can derive the benefits connected to this dua, to this supplication of Allah, to, to this supplication which Prophet taught, taught us. And another way to get connected to Dhul Jalal wal Ikram, as I said before, there are two different elements uh, mentioned in this attribute of Allah. One is Al Jalal, second is Al Karim, uh, Al Ikram. Al Jalal, Zul Jalal, Al Jalal. We need to seek all the respect from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, without resorting to any unfair means to get the popularity, popularity and fame among the people, which is of no use to us, which is of no benefit to us. Rather, we need to get the entire honor, dignity from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And how can we achieve the honor and dignity from Allah? The condition is taqwa. Allah says in the Quran. In Akramakum in the Allah Atkakum. Indeed, the most honored amongst you in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Atkakum, the one who is most pious. The one, those who, who achieve the piety, who practice the piety, they don't have to ask for the respect and honor and dignity. The byproduct of it is the honor and dignity. Allah says, In Akramakum. Indeed, the most honored amongst you in the sight of Allah is the one who is most pious person. So this is when we uh, we ask for the respect and then uh, uh, wal ikram second part is wal ikram means to be generous enough. Allah is immensely generous and we need to we need to adhere we need to follow we need to practice a portion of it is a portion of generosity we need to practice as well. And Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sakhi, the one who is generous enough, he is close to people, close to Jannah, close to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, the Lord of generosity, being inspiration for us to be generous enough. 
and it is also as I said Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the generous one is close to Allah close to people and far from the fire on the other hand Bakhil is away from Allah away from people and close to the Jahannam and the generous one close to Allah close to people and close to Jannah and away from the Jahannam we ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to grant us a tawfiq so that we practice uh, uh, Dhul Jalal wal Ikram in our practical lives. Another thing, how can we get connected to connected to this specific attribute of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is that uh, since Allah says in the Quran, we discuss the verse, "Kullu man alayha fani wa yabqa wajh Rabbika Dhul Jalal wal Ikram." We need to seek the face of Allah, the pleasure of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. The sole target in our life, the basic objective of our existence, is to get the pleasure of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Imagine, may Allah protect us from being such people that they do a lot of good deeds, but by the end of the day, their good deeds won't bear any fruit, and Allah doesn't accept it because there is fundamentally something problematic with their actions, either corruption in the intention or something else. So what is the benefit of their lifelong actions and deeds if Allah is not pleased with? <laughs> what is the significance of all these actions and deeds if Allah is not pleased with? So all our objective should be to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is through Ya Dhal Jalali Wal Ikram. When we say Ya Dhal Jalali Wal Ikram, so we, we seek your pleasure. We seek your rida. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes his noble face as being Dhul Jalal wal Ikram. Only he is worthy of being revered and obeyed. So we make we should make it a mission, our passion. So our mission and passion should be to seek the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all our deeds. When we focus on this thing, when our sole objective is to get pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the first and foremost an instant reward we get with the consol consolation in the heart, solace of the heart. We, we, we find the people, the complex, co complex, full of complex, full of complexities in the life, full of complications. But the one who try to seek the pleasure of Allah, the face of Dhul Jalal wal Ikram, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replete his heart, fills up his heart with solace and tranquility. And so we need to engage ourselves. We need to keep ourselves patient with those who call on their Lord morning and evening. Means we need to stay with them. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, that those who seek the company of those who invoke upon the Zul Jalali wal Karam. This means that if we do something for someone else or give someone, someone something, uh, we don't do it for their praise or recognition, but only to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All our assistance, help to others. If you want to help out others, there should be no any hidden agenda. As I said before, there are many politicians, they do, they help the people out. Why? Because they want to maintain their vote bank. So all their efforts are to ensure that the people cast a vote after every five years. It's a meager thing, they have their target. But the gen genius people, they always seek the pleasure of Allah. They know that all the things of the dunya, all the possessions of the dunya, will come to an end. It will vanish into thin air. But if we seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there's a greatest ever blessing with us, which will never come to an end, which will never vanish or finish. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, says in the Quran, praising such people, that whenever they, they do anything, they do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to seek the face of Allah. Allah says in Surah Al-Dahar, which is also known as Surah Al-Insan, إِنَّمَا نُطْئِمُكُمْ لِوَجْهِ اللَّهِ This Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يُطِئِمُونَ الطَّعَامَ عَلَىٰ حُبِّهِ مِسْكِينًا وَيَتِيمًا وَأَسِيرًا they feed the people, they feed the food to the people. Out of his love, out of his tremendous love, out of the 
tremendous love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they feed the people. يُتَيْمُونَ التَّامَ عَلَىٰ حُبِّهِ مِسْكِينَ The destitute وَيَتِيمَ The orphan وَأَسِيرَ The prisoner And after feeding them, after providing the assistance to them, after helping them out, they say, إِنَّمَا نُتَيْمُكُمْ Why do we feed you? Do we want any vote from you? Any support from you? Any praise from you? إِنَّمَا نُتَيْمُكُمْ Indeed, إِنَّمَا In Arabic grammar, it is known as كَلِمَةُ الْحَصَرْ which restricts the meaning to what is mentioned now. Innama, indeed, holy and solely what, why we do this? Innama nuta'imukum, indeed we feed you. Liwajhillah. What's the motivation with us? It's not to show to the people. It's not to make a show off. Rather, it's not just for the sake of ostentation. Innama nuta'imukum, liwajhillah. Indeed we feed you. To seek the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لا نريد منكم جزاء ولا شكورا We neither want any form of لا نريد منكم جزاء We neither want from you any form of reward ولا شكورا Not even thanks. Even if you, if, you, if you don't express thankfulness to us, we don't need it. Because our objective is to do it for the sake of Allah. So whenever we do anything, we should keep in our mind رُّو الْجَلَالِ وَالْإِكْرَامِ when he gives us abundantly and then he doesn't say, I, I give this to you, this to you, this to you. And he never expresses favor upon us. So we should not also express our favor upon others. This, That's how we can practice this. And once we do this way, once we practice our, once our way of life is this way, that we do, we help out others. We do all our actions, we perform all our actions only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then, then and only then we can see the true sweetness of life. Otherwise, it is all a selfish guy walking on the two legs like the animals. So this is another way how can we get connected to Ya Adhal Jalali Wal Ikram. Another important way to get connected to this specific attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As I said that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a source of all respect, honor and dignity and generosity. When we receive the gifts from others, say one example, a simple example. For example, if each of us, every one of us gets $100,000 every month in our account. And we know that it, is, it, it, it not only suffices our needs, it is much more beyond that. If every month we get in our account $100,000, so shall we be ingrateful enough not to know who sent this to me? Who is the source of this beneficence and this generosity? Definitely, the demand of loyalty, the demand of sincerity is that we need to find out the source of this, the one, the one who, who sends this to us. But it will be altogether ingratefulness, thanklessness on our part. If we say, okay, I have, I have nothing to do with who sends it to me. What's more important, I need to just spend it. I need to just uh, exploit it. I need, to, need, I need to use it for my own expenses. This will be truly ingratefulness, thanklessness on the part of a person. And that person is, in its fullest form, the ultimate selfish person. The ultra selfish person. On the other hand, the, the sign of sincerity, the symbol of sincerity is a person will try to see who sent this hundred thousand dollar every month to me. And then he wants to pay thankfulness to him. He wants to pay homage to him, a tribute to him because of this munificence. And this is the, the eagerness will definitely develop in our heart to find out the source of this. And all, every day, all through this world, we are blessed with hundreds and thousands of the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We never try to get to the source of all these things. We appreciate that the sun is the largest source of energy. We get the heat energy, we get the light energy, we get many more rays. Now the solar technology is, is booming up. But 
it is we we appreciate the we appreciate the sun but not the one who is the main source of this energy that is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who provided this who created this nowadays a pandemic is all over the world may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put an end to this pandemic there's shortage of uh, this oxygen concentrators now we can realize the importance of the oxygen we ask the covid victims the importance of the oxygen <clears throat> and this oxygen is it is in tremendous amount it surrounds us in tremendous amount we acknowledge oxygen is there our life depends on it but what is the source of this oxygen so we need to find out the source of all the blessings and we come to the conclusion it is zul jalali wal ikram who put each and everything for us who managed each and everything for us that's why our life is possible on the planet scientists are trying their best to find out any other part in the world in this universe where the life is possible if they find one element other is missing if the other is found the third one is missing but here we can see it in abundance is it of its own is more precious than the 100000 dollars we get in our account because if we don't get it still our life we can survive but without the oxygen we cannot survive so we appreciate oxygen exist but we never try to find out the source of the oxygen who is the creator of this oxygen that's allah subhanahu wa taala <clears throat> and all these blessings and bounties for bi ayi ala rabbikum tukadhiban which of the blessings and bounties of allah will you deny o oh, humans and the jinns when we realize upon this ya dhul jalal wal ikram <clears throat> definitely wallahi a person will get closer to allah because all the things we possess is all gifted to us by zul jalal wal ikram he gave everything to us which we need in our life but unfortunately we we remember the things but we forget the creator of the things we use these blessings and bounties but we neglect the creator of the bounties bounties and the blessings So this is a way to get connected to Zul Jalal wal Ikram to find out the source of each and everything, and then recognizing the source. And if a person is doing good to us, so automatically, out of human nature, we say thanks. We say thank you. Or in Arabic, Jazakallah Khair, Jazakillah Khaira. <coughs> Something fundamental in our human nature. If we do good to someone else. and he doesn't say thanks apparently we feel angry we feel dejected and disappointed that at least he should have a token of respect a token of thanks he must have given to us so this is this is our human nature when we do good we want to be repaid for this and allah subhanahu wa taala has been doing good to us since the long before the creation of the human beings because in the first instance he set the stage in such a way that the human beings could survive on the planet so he ensured each and everything for us we are being invited to a feast in a magnificent hall in a magnificent palace we are being invited and all the things are prepared there what we have to do only is to just consume the food so definitely once we get this food we get an oppo- we get the opportunity to to have the feast in a magnificent palace then definitely we have we we want to pay thanks to the person who 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 privileged us who honored us we we say i am highly honored that you invited me to this feast and you 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 respected me i am highly respected and honored but what about allah subhanahu wa taala all we possess is from allah subhanahu wa taala zul jalali wal ikram so Uh, this other way that we get connected to dhul jalal wal ikram and the other thing the last one is uh, to 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 supplicate allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with ya dhul jalal wal ikram prophet muhammad sallallahu ta'ala sallam said in one of the hadith alizu bi ya dhul jalal wal ikram prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that uh, we need to ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, we need to persist we need to insist with ya dal jalali wal ikram 
Ya Dhal Jalali Wal Ikram. Ya Dhal Jalali Wal Ikram. So whenever we make any dua to Allah, whenever, whenever we supplicate to Allah, it must be ended up with Ya Dhal Jalali Wal Ikram. Ya Dhal Jalali Wal Ikram. As Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that Alizu be Ya Dhal Jalali Wal Ikram. Alizu means be persistent. Insist upon this specific supplication. Because the insistence reflects our humble said humility to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we beg to Allah persistently and we insist in our begging to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that shows our humility which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves a lot. And when we ask Allah, when we make dua with Ya Dal Jalali wal Ikram, we should have the firm faith and believe that Allah accepts this dua. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted this dua. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open up our hearts for this specific attribute so that we can connect ourselves to it and we can practice the demands of this of Zul Jalal wa Al-Ikram. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Subhanallah wa hamdihi. Subhanak Allahum wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun. Wassalamun ala al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.